EOS 1500D is a great first step into the world of DSLR photography. It's packed full of great features to help you take a really beautiful photo. In this video, I'm going to take a close look at the 1500D and share with you some basic tips and tricks to help you get the most out of your camera. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing you'll need to do is turn your camera on and identify the different modes on top of the mode dial. So let's take a quick look at those now. To turn the camera on, we simply move this switch here up to the on position and I'm going to run through some of these modes here on the dial. First of all, we have the green automatic mode. This is a great place to start if you just want the camera to automatically select the best settings for your shot. Moving on from that, you have the semi-manual modes, which is P, TV, AV and M. These will take you through a range of options that will allow you to individually change the shutter speed, the aperture to get the best results for your image. The first one on the mode dial we'll talk about is the intelligent auto mode. This is signified by the green A with the plus symbol. This is a really intelligent mode for automatically selecting the best settings according to the scene that you're photographing. Moving up from there, we have P, which is program mode. This will select the shutter speed and the aperture for you automatically based on the reading that the light meter detects. TV mode is to control our shutter priority. This is where we can individually set the shutter speed according to the subject and how much motion you want to capture. AV stands for aperture priority. This is where we can select the different F stops. As you can see here, I'm using the mode dial to change these. This will control our depth of field in the frame. The low number is beautiful for capturing blurry backgrounds, where the higher the number, the more detail you'll capture throughout the frame. And the last one on here is manual exposure. Manual exposure is perfect for having full control over both the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO in the shot. Now, as we quickly move through the mode dial, below the A automatic, we'll have flash off, creative auto, portrait, landscape, close up, sports, food, night portraits, and finally, a movie mode. So you can see there how quickly and easy it is to change the different shooting modes depending on the subject that you're wanting to photograph. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is this neat little dial up here right next to the viewfinder. This is the diopter and it simply changes the focus so that you can see through this view piece here with or without your glasses on. So if you need to adjust that according to your eyesight, simply move this little dial here to the right or left until what you see through the view piece is focused. Don't worry, this doesn't adjust the focus from the lens. It's simply to control what you see through the viewfinder here. To shoot in live view, we need to press this button on the back here. You can see the little camera with the square. This will activate our live view mode. So in live view, I can then frame up my shot here as I like it and press the shutter at the front to take the photo. Our live view button also acts as the movie start and stop when the camera is in movie mode. So let's move our mode dial all the way around to video mode. There we go. And you'll see the screen automatically turns on. Now when I press this button at the back here where the little red dot is, that will automatically start my video recording. And again, to stop it, simply press that button once more. Now you've taken some great photos, let me show you how to review those. We can also magnify in on that image, make sure that they're nice and sharp with all the detail. And if the image isn't sharp, I'll show you how to delete that as well. First thing you'll need to do is to locate this blue playback button here. This is how we'll playback and review the images. Now, if we want to magnify in, you'll notice we have a blue magnifying glass at the top here with a plus and minus. If I press this button, I can see this image will magnify nice and close on my screen and I can press the minus magnify button to zoom out. If the image isn't to your liking and you want to erase it from the memory card, simply press the little trash can here and you'll have a second option just to confirm that you do want to erase that photo, erase or cancel. Simply go across, select erase and press set to delete that image. Okay, if you want to change your AF selection point, you need to use this little button here. When I press it, you'll notice the options come up on the back of the screen. You can change from automatic selection 
down to a manual selection point. Having a single point focus really allows you to be very particular about where your focus point lies. This is great for taking photos of portraits where you need to make sure that the eye is very sharp in focus or even landscapes and macro photography as well. So to do that, we simply press the auto AF point selection button here and move from auto to manual. Further to that, I can either have my point anywhere around the screen from the center to the top or to the far right or left. One of the features I use all the time is the exposure compensation dial. This is a really quick and easy way for you to control your exposure a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. It's very simple to activate and let me show you how. Simply by holding down this plus and minus button at the back here, you'll notice that the exposure compensation dial is now activated and ready to use. I control that by sliding my finger to the right or to the left on this multi-control dial at the top. One of the quickest ways to navigate around the back of your screen is simply by using this quick button on the back. It's signified by the little Q. It's a really neat way to jump between your shutter speed, exposure compensation, white balance, one shot, all of the really handy things that you need to change on the back of your camera very quickly can be accessed simply by pressing the Q button there. The next option we have here is the display. If you want to turn the display off so you don't see the information on the back of the screen, it's very simple to do. Simply press the display button on the back and the screen will turn black. To turn that back on, press the display button once more. Okay, on the back of the camera, you'll notice that you have the up, down, left, right and set button on the back of the camera. Let me talk through those options a little bit further for you. Here is the ISO button, which is a really quick way to navigate through your different ISO settings. On the right hand side, you have AF. This will change your AF operation from one shot, AI focus to AI servo. Below that is WB, WB stands for white balance, a really quick and easy way that you can navigate through the camera's preset white balance options. And on the left hand side, you have the drive and self timer mode. So this is great for taking single shots, continuous shots or activating one of the camera's three built-in self-timer modes. Now to set any of those options, just use the big set button in the middle just to make sure that mode is definitely locked in. These two buttons at the top here, the star signifies your AE lock, so when you want to lock your exposure in. And on the right hand side, this will change your AF point selection. By default, the camera is selected to automatic. However, if you do want to refine your focus a little bit further, you can press the set button to activate the manual selection. To use the camera's built-in flash, simply press the little flash button on the top right-hand side of the camera and you'll notice it will pop up. On the left-hand side of the camera here, you'll notice that you have a few little plugs concealed behind this little flap here. So if we open up, the first one we have is the remote control. We then have the camera USB cable and we also have a HDMI out. So if you need to connect the camera into a variety of devices, TV, computer, etc., you can do that by using these plugs here. You'll also notice this little NFC symbol here. This is where we activate the camera's built-in wireless communication settings. On the bottom of the camera, this is where the card and battery is inserted. To attach and detach the lens, simply hold this button down and rotate the lens. When attaching it, please make sure that you connect the white square to the white square and then turn it in a clockwise direction until you hear the click. You'll notice on the left-hand side of the lens, you have a couple of little switches here. This is to turn the stabilizer mode on and off. And above that, we have AF and MF, autofocus and manual focus for the lens. On top of the camera here, you have the hot shoe. The hot shoe is a really great way of attaching accessories to the camera. For example, a microphone or maybe a flash. The camera also does have a built-in speaker and microphone built into the camera here. On the back of the camera, you'll notice the menu button. This is a really quick way to access some of the more in-depth features that the camera has within its menu system. You might notice every now and again, these two lights here will flash red. That's perfectly normal. The one on the right hand side is simply signifying that the information is being written to the card and the one on the left hand side is indicating that there is a connection with the Wi-Fi. I hope this video has helped you to get to know a little bit more about your new EOS 1500D.
make sure you check out the next video in our series where I'll be talking about some of the more advanced features to help you get more out of your camera.